Dr. Rudy Navari. Dr. Navari is the clinical director of the Harper Cancer Research Institute at the Indiana University School of Medicine and is an adjunct professor of biochemistry. He is board certified in internal medicine and medical oncology, and in 2012, he was named the associate dean and director of the Indiana School of, of Medicine. So welcome, Dean Navari. I want to tell you a little bit about a pilot project that we've done about uh, trying to enhance the communication skills of our medical students. And uh, according to Paul Help, uh, since I'm a medical oncologist, I need some of this as well. So we, uh, I'm sure all of you have this kind of experience in your medical school. Uh, the first year of medical students, um, we um, teach them about history taking and physical examination. Second year, we put them into, pa into patient contacts, and you ex expect them to do well. But we don't tell them that not all the patients are the same about the ones that we described in year one. And then in the third year, we put them in clinical clerkships, and we're surprised that they sort of have problems communicating with patients. And then, of course, in the fourth year, we do clinical electives and take their 15 patient tests in a regional center and don't do well as, as, as well. So the question is, why, why are students not doing well? Well, part of the problems is that they have to deal with pac real patients in terms of depressed patients, anxious patients, angry patients, patients who don't talk to them, or patients who talk too much. And they don't really know how to do this. So we, we um, started a pilot project uh, funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to talk a little bit about how they can actually approach real patients. And we did some uh, training with patient actors. Uh, we have some clinical uh, intensive care unit nurses that we've trained as actors. We've also were fortunate to use some actors from the film, the television, and theater program at, in South Bend at the University of Notre Dame to help us to pre present some of these scenarios. And we started out with um, talking with the patient. Now, I know there are surgeons in the room, and I don't want to offend anybody, but one of the scenarios we did with patient actors and actually some of our clinicians on staff is the orthopedic surgeon in the doorway who looks at the MRI and says, you need, you need a new knee, we'll schedule you. And we did this scenario and um, expressed to patients, this is not, especially students, this is not what you're supposed to do. And I'm sure some of you have, have seen some of this, these activities. Now, we also did a scenario with the laptop, the cell phone, and the iPad in the exam room. Now, I'm not going to ask for hands of people who take their laptop in the exam room and the laptops between the, the physician and the patient, and the physician treats the laptop or the iPad. Okay, <clears throat> and we did a scenario to tell the patients, this is not what you're supposed to be doing, okay? And again, I don't know what you do, but I don't take my laptop or my iPad in the exam room. I basically review the patient's history before I go in, and I don't bring any of my devices in the room. Now, that may be more time consuming, but I would, I would strongly suggest this is not good medicine, not, does not enhance patient communication. So maybe you should leave your device in your office before you come to see the patient. And then we did a, scenar a, a scenario where we do an informative patient office visit about coming in, providing an adequate salutation, sitting down, asking the patient about how they're doing and how their life is going, and then talk to them about their medical problem. And after we did this, we went and did um, patient um, scenarios with a depressed patient with, with our actors, and we actually did the depressed patient, the anxious patient, the angry patient, an introverted and extroverted patient. We actually had, had scenarios in which they actually saw this, and we also used film clips that were available on the internet 
for these patients, and they could actually see how these kinds of patients would present. And then we had them do this uh, with uh, our patient actors and actually film that. An example of one of the things we did is breaking bad news. As an oncologist, I do this often. Okay, so it's one of my particular um, interests. And some effective film clips, and you may be familiar with these. Lorenzo is a film clip of a child who had essentially a very bad prognosis due to a genetic illness. And the physician sat down with the patients, with the parents, the child was somewhere else, and basically explained to them the bad prognosis. It was very effective, very well done, and I think it displayed to the students how these kinds of things should be done. You may or may not have seen terms of endearment, in which a woman was being examined by her physician. She brought to the physician's attention that she had a lump under her arm. The physician discounted it um, as nothing, told her to go ahead and go on vacation, and we'll take care of it when you come back. The next scene was I must admit, the oncologist hovering over the bed with a patient in the bed, telling her that she had a poor prognosis and she needed to get her um, life in order. Again, an example of a bad way to break bad news. And finally, we, we actually did a scenario with the shootist. Some of you may remember this. This was with John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart, John Wayne was the gunfighter, Jimmy Stewart was the physician, and um, John Wayne comes in saying, Doc, you, you um, treated me a number of years ago and I got well, now I have bad, bad pain in my abdomen, and um, I want you to examine me and, and tell me what I have. And then the next scene was Jimmy Stewart, the physician, sitting down with John Wayne, the patient, and did a really outstanding job of breaking bad news and really a good example of how this was done. I think the film clips, the patient actors, the nurses we had, really, I think, taught and showed students what they really should be doing. And this was superimposed on their history and physical examination, which was normal part of um, of their, of their training. We also did some counseling skills for the students. Um, this is a very good website you can look at. Uh, active listening, asking questions, paraphrasing and summarizing, setting achievable goals, and proposing action items. Now, you may think this is overload for these students, but you know, it, and I worried about this, but it really wasn't overload. I think it showed them things that they would really see and encounter with real patients. And so this, this uh, uh, actually worked very well. Uh, we actually did some education on palliative care settings, withdrawing and withholding interventions. I'm sure you recognize this four-pronged approach, which was outlined in Mark's book medical indications, patient preferences, quality of life, and external factors as the things that they should consider in palliative care settings. So we did all this in year one, and I think that uh, patient, the students actually uh, were very interested and actually, in after some practice sessions, did very well. In year two, we actually did all these scenarios with the, with the students, with patient actors, patient in denial, emotionally distraught patient, angry patient, overwhelmed patient, depressed, palliative care options, and caregiver issues. So this was the end of year two, in which all the students had to go through uh, these scenarios to, to deal with these experiences. And then in year three, uh, in their clerkships, in their clinical clerkships, we 
had them go through these scenarios with real patients. And these were observed by their clinician faculty mentors. Um, in some cases, they were filmed, but in most cases, they weren't because they were in the regular clinical clerkships seeing regular patients. And um, in pediatrics, a new infection, especially a new infection to the patient and the parents. Internal medicine, new diagnosis of a chronic illness, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, a surgical intervention, prenatal care for OBGYN. In neurology, a new diagnosis of a new neurological diagnosis. And then when the students rotated in the emergency department, we tried to have them take part in a interaction with a patient or, or mainly family post-trauma. And some patients, some students did well, some students learned a lot, and some, some students didn't do very well. So, in summary, what we tried to do in this pilot project and, um, is to take these students through this. It's the second year we're doing this now, and we're comparing it with another regional campus of the Indiana University Medical School System who did not get this intervention, and we're going to look at the scores that they get in their fourth year, 15 patient evaluation. Uh, we hope that if we can show a, um, an improvement, then we hope to be able to go back to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for additional funding. So we want to in increase the awareness in the students, the communication skills, make them understand the need of communication skills, um, look at what skills are needed for specific patient interventions, and have them practice these skills. Um, Dr. Health had a third and a third and a third uh, division. Um, I have a third and a third and a third also. I think if you look at our medical students, and this is my personal opinion, a third of them communicate extremely well. And you probably don't have to teach them very much. It's just they, they, they got that, and I think you know who those physicians are. A third of our medical students need really some teaching, and they can really improve their communication skills. And I must say, a third of the medical students may not do well. Uh, maybe those are the oncologists that we, we know about. I don't know. I hope not. So um, this is a pilot project. We seem to be on the right track. We hope that it will be effective uh, as time goes on. Thank you.